so here I've got the key to my car it's a BMW and uh, the battery has uh, drained in this it no longer works but there again it is uh, over 15 years old now I've just rang the uh, local BMW garage and they want uh, £75 for a new key and then a further £55 to program that key to my car now that seems a little bit excessive to me to say it's just uh, the battery that's died in this so I want to try and uh, crack this open and see how easy it is to swap that battery out because uh, the battery you can pick up off eBay for around uh, three pounds and free shipping you know it's uh, not a lot of money at all but uh, the way BMW have constructed this key is it's impossible to get into this without uh, using uh, some kind of force because it's uh, plastic welded all down the side here the seam um, other key fobs like this I've had uh, Volkswagens in the past and uh, they either click open you know they've got little tabs and you can force them open or you know I've got a little screw holding them in place but this one is all plastic welded so I'm going to have to use a knife to cut carefully around here so I can separate the two halves and then get into the battery so there's a couple of options I could use to open this up I can use a fine uh, saw wheel on the Dremel tool to uh, very carefully cut down the seam here but there's a couple of YouTube videos that uh, have shown this not in great detail but uh, they've all used a uh, sharp craft knife like this and if you have a look down here there's a ridge so I should be able to follow that quite easily uh, as far as the electronics go there's none in this uh, loop here so we don't have to worry too much about it and uh, the electronics are in this area here so I think I should be able to uh, cut the seam down here without uh, damaging any of the electronics at all so that's uh, what I'm going to go with I'm going to work very carefully it's quite a sharp knife this and work it down the side just taking my time to get into the uh, plastic housing there so I'm just applying a little bit of force and wiggling it backwards and forwards so that blade will cut into the plastic you need to be really careful here because uh, you know you could slip and cut your hands but uh, I am having to put quite a bit of force down on this to cut through in that to that plastic so I've almost got the key fob apart then the straight bits are the uh, trickiest but uh, it doesn't take a great deal of force and time you just as I say you need to be really really careful using the blade so here's the key in two halves then so we can see what's uh, actually inside this now which isn't a great deal you know it's not worth the money that uh, BMW are asking and I realise that uh, this uh, battery is not uh, typically a replacement part because you have to cut into this housing but how easy would it have been for BMW to de design a key that uh, you know you could screw the uh, two halves apart and get in there to change this coin cell because at the end of the day this coin cell is around three pounds and this is a rechargeable coin coin cell as well and that's very important and um, you know it's, it's, it's just a complete waste of money um, this will end up in uh, the uh, trash you know in landfill when uh, you know a small design feature could have changed this completely to make it uh, you know reusable just by changing that coin cell so you can see the thickness of the plastic that I had to cut through and uh, here it is at its uh, thickest and uh, that's there of course because it's got to support the uh, main body of the key itself so it needs a little bit extra strength there so the entire housing doesn't twist off from uh, this part of the key you know in general use but um, this is the coin cell as I've said we've got to desolder this and then solder the new one in and uh, this is uh, a uh, a rechargeable coin cell and it recharges through uh, an inductive mechanism a uh, wireless mechanism if you like and uh, on the back side of this there should be a uh, coil of wire um, as I said this is the antenna for the uh, operation of the uh, key fob but uh, underneath here there should be a coil of wire 
because uh, when it's positioned in the ignition um, there's also a coil of wire where the uh, around the keyhole in the ignition itself and uh, when those two come into close contact there's a small trickle uh, feed of uh, voltage that trickles down to this battery to keep it uh, recharged which is why if you leave these um, away from the uh, car for a length of time the uh, battery can run down and that's probably my uh, biggest problem because I do not use this car during the week and sometimes I don't use it at all at the weekend so I do very little miles so it's a combination of uh, the age of this coin cell and the fact that I don't use it very often so it doesn't get that uh, trickle charge so to desolder these then, uh, if you take a closer look at the battery itself, you can see that it's just uh, connected by those two terminals, it's not glued down to the PCB board. So under there we can get uh, a little spudger to help pry, put some force on this side to pull it out of the uh, solder point here, the hole in the PCB, as we apply some heat with the soldering iron to melt the solder. Now there's no... Uh, electronics or anything under there but I'm going to use uh, a plastic spudger which I've got here and I'm going to place that under this first terminal so I'm just going to concentrate on desoldering this first terminal here and uh, what that will allow me to do is with my two hands I can come in with the soldering iron here and uh, I can apply some pressure on this side so I can force it out of there once the uh, solder is melted. So I've got my soldering iron here and uh, remember it's not just heat, solder also melts solder so I've got a little bit of solder on the tip. So I'm now going to force uh, this spudger and the battery apart with my finger here whilst uh, applying heat to this terminal here. So we've got the first one off and I'm just going to do the exact same with the second one. I'm going to come under here with my little plastic uh, pry tool, my spudger here, do the same thing, apply a little bit of pressure and put some heat in here. And it's as easy as that. So I've got the new battery on the uh, left here and the old one on the right. The arrangement of the uh, pins here to solder it in place is a little bit different. I uh, think the original BMW one has got this arrangement here and uh, the same on the underside just to add a little bit more protection to hold the battery in place you know for shock if you drop your keys or throw your keys or anything like that the uh, new one hasn't got that but I don't think it's going to make too much of a difference uh, the new one is uh, an unbranded one where I believe the BMW one is a Panasonic so I don't think the new one is going to last the 15 years that the Panasonic one has but even so it should give me uh, plenty more years of use out of my key fob so I've opened up the two holes where I'm going to be soldering the new battery in place and uh, how I've done that if uh, you come in with your soldering iron add a little bit of heat into this area and then when the solder is molten just give it a little flick and the solder should drop through and the hole should open up same on the opposite side come in with your soldering iron then give it a little flick and the solder will drop through so you've got two clear holes now to put the new uh, terminals for the battery through so we can solder them in place so we've got the new battery's terminals through and it doesn't quite lay in the same position as the original one but i don't think it's going to cause too much of a problem so now i'm going to solder those two terminals in place so i've got the key fob held down on my bench with some masking tape here just to make it stable when i come in with the soldering iron so it's not moving about and I'm going into a little bit more detail here than I normally would in my channel because uh, possibly, you know, if you uh, Google changing the battery in the key fob, you're probably not uh, used to my channel. So, you know, soldering is very, very easy to do. It doesn't take a lot of skill at all to pick up the basics of soldering. And uh, I'm going to solder the two terminals in here with the soldering iron. And uh, basically what you've got to remember is, as I uh, previously said, solder melts solder as well as heat so 
what I'm going to do is tin up my soldering iron and then give it a little bit of a clean a little bit more solder on there and then I'm going to come in with a soldering iron and heat up the terminal and uh, the solder point here as well and just flow a little bit of solder in from the side here so heat up the uh, terminal and the uh, PCB there a little bit of solder and get it to flow and solder that leg into position and same on the other side get some heat in there and get the solder to flow I'll put a little bit more on here and that's soldered in place a little bit of a gap there but uh, the leg is soldered on there so I'm not too worried about that so you can see the battery only just fits in there you know it could have been doing with uh, pushing a little bit more that way but it does fit in I've uh, already lined the two halves up and uh, you know it, it, it does close up still so what I've done is uh, cleaned away any uh, loose bits of plastic from the sides there I've also given them a clean with some isopropanol because 15 years of dirt does get in the uh, groove around here so to glue the two halves together I'm going to use epoxy rather than anything like super glue basically super glue acts too fast but uh, epoxy is a really strong glue but uh, if you want to get back into this again with epoxy if you uh, warm the key fob up with uh, something like a hairdryer the uh, epoxy will uh, soften up and you will be able to pry the two halves apart get back in here and change the battery again if needed so that's why I'm going to use epoxy and you can see on this half of the key fob there's uh, a very small gully going all the way around the uh, key fob itself so I'm going to use a little cocktail stick to get a small amount of epoxy all the way around here and then smear a bit of epoxy on this side here and then bring the two halves together clamp them together with some masking tape leave it for five minutes and hopefully it'll set and that'll uh, give a strong enough job to keep the two halves together and as I said if I need to get back in there a hairdryer warm it up should be uh, you know fine to get back into the key fob itself so I've got the epoxy in this half of the fob and you can see I haven't gone over the top with the epoxy at all there's no need to uh, put loads and loads of epoxy on there and uh, when I bring the two halves together if there is an excess that uh, squeezes out on this side I can just use an alcohol wipe and it'll just wipe the excess straight away so here is the finished key fob then and I've already been and checked it it does work flawlessly now doesn't need uh, reprogramming or anything like that so uh, it's definitely saved me quite a lot of money doing this myself and of course the uh, price that BMW charges for a replacement key you can quite easily go on eBay and buy yourself a little uh, soldering iron as a kit with a little bit of solder as well and uh, do this yourself as I said there's nothing difficult about uh, soldering just uh, remember the golden rules heat and solder melt solder and uh, certainly something that you could easily do yourself so if you enjoyed this video please uh, give it a thumbs up any comments and uh, drop them below i'll do my best to answer them and hopefully you'll join me on the next one